welcome back to yet another video on Tony's tutorial and in this video we discuss about a very important chapter like the shoulder complex which has a greater weightage for the university examination often I have seen in university examination uh, either an essay question or a short essay or two or three short notes have been asked from this chapter and one peculiarity is that some of the questions are a bit tricky. So you need to prepare well to attend this chapter. Seeming, uh, but it seems to be very easy. So let us explore which are the important questions and how to write uh, some of them for the university examination point of view. Right, in knee complex, as I told you, we discussed under three headings. One is a uh, long essay question second one is a short essay question and third one is a short note question the weightage of the questions can vary for example in some universities it can be 20 marks or 15 or 10 marks for the long essay so it can vary but uh, the questions mostly remain the same so the first thing that they can ask you in this in long essay is what are the stability and mobility components of the knee joint so it seems to be a very tricky question because it's not a direct question. You don't see a heading like uh, what are the stability and mobility components of the knee joint in your textbook. You don't see a heading. You have to correlate with the things that you have studied. So how do you write the such a question? Since it's a tough one, I'm going to discuss that. How do you how do you write that question? So stability components and mobility components are that one they need. So it's an essay question. So you write with starting a heading and a paragraph about the knee joint. You have to write about the knee joint here refers to the tibiofemoral joint. If it is knee complex only you have to write about the patellofemoral joint. Otherwise you can skip on that. So here it refers to the tibiofemoral joint. Just write what type of joint it is, what are the types of articulations, what are the degrees of freedom etc. In a very small introduction paragraph make it beautiful because the first impression is the best impression right yeah okay and then you move on to identify what are the stability components remember this question can be asked not just in the knee complex but they can be asked in the hip they can be asked in the shoulder they can be asked in ankle complex etc so wherever you see the question known as the stability components, you have to remember which are the structures that will provide stability to the joint. So the stability to the joint is provided as a sum of different factors like one is the bone, the articulation of the bone, the peculiarity of the articular surface. The second one is the ligaments, very important. Third one is the muscles. So bones, ligaments, muscles. What are that? Bones, ligaments, muscles are the things that provide stability. Along with that, the associated structures like the joint capsule, the main sky which is seen in knee joint, or any other associated structures or maybe uh, IT band in knee joint etc can contribute to the stability so we'll see how it is done so remember you have to wherever you see this question you have to write down like uh, first with the muscle bone second you go for the ligaments along with that you can add associated structures like the capsule the meniscus etc disc if it is a present that you can mention etc and then you have to move on to the muscles so these are the components that provide stability what about the mobility? Mobility, you know that. You have to write about the which are the motions that are possible in that joint and how muscles provide the joint. You don't, you, if you just write down what are the motions, you don't get the marks. Right? right? How that motions are possible with the help of the muscles. Right. So this literally means that they are asking about that complete tibiofemoral joint. Okay. I wish that you don't get such a big question in your examination because you have to write everything about here, right? So let us see. So you start with the introduction, then you go for the bond. What are the peculiarity of the bond you saw you see in the knee joint? So first you have to write about the distal end of the femur. You have to write about the medial condyle, lateral condyle. What are the shapes of the medial and lateral condyle? Of course, they are convex shaped. How it is different, you have to write medial condyle is larger than the lateral condyle. And for example, if our tibia was a femur was a straight one, of course, medial end would be projecting downwards. 
this won't be a horizontal line between medial and lateral contents i have explained clearly in the first videos so since me and there is an angulation for the femur it is uh, it is in such a way that both medial and lateral contents are in the horizontal line so these are the important things for the joint stability if there is an imbalance between for example this is the medial this is the lateral condyle for example this condyle is downwards and so like this you can see that there can be an imbalance between the articulation surface so you have to write down that don't forget about that just go through the textbook or our videos and write down the important points then you have to write about the tibial plateaus, medial and lateral plateaus of the tibia. Uh, then the intertubercular sulcus, you have to write uh, what you call uh, uh, tubercular, uh, the patellar groove, you have to mention. Then the tubercles of the tibia, you have to mention, etc. You have to mention which are the peculiarities of tibia, which can help it to become a better joint. I have to mention all about that. Very short not you have, don't know how to explain you don't know how to explain the entire story but you have to explain the important things no need to explain the unimportant things in the tibia or in the femur okay from that you have to move on to the menisci you don't have to write much about the shape of the menisci the nutrition of the menisci nourishment nothing you have to write down what are menisci how many menisci are there in the knee joint and how it is providing to the stability because you know that Menisca increases the articular surface. The concavity increases the con, what do you call concurrence of the joint. So such things you have to mention. How menisca is contributing to the stability. That's what you have to focus on. Then you have to write about the joint capsule. You know that the joint capsule is a vast one in knee joint. We have an one exclusive video on that. From that you have to bring up which are the important points into a very small paragraph, write down somewhere in your notebook and if sister question comes, you have to write. So you have to write out a very simple single joint capsule is there. You have to write down in joint capsule about the extensor mechanism of the knee. Don't forget about that. And if possible, write down different ligaments. Ligaments are actually coming for patellofemoral joints. So even if you don't for write about the ligaments which are seen in the joint capsule, it's okay. But write about the extensor mechanism, okay? And then comes the most important things that I, as I told you, the ligaments of the knee joint. Medial collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament, anterior cruciate ligament, posterior rotation ligament. They are not, uh, they are not interested in knowing your anatomy skills of anterior collateral, medial collateral, lateral collateral, etc. How they are providing stability. How valgus stability is provided, how virus stability is provided, which one provides stability against anterior translation, etc. That you have to mention. So remember, the question is about the stability component. Don't just write down the anatomy and think that you will get more. I have to mention about the stability component. And finally, you have to write out the IT band because IT band can provide lateral joint stability, lateral part of the joint stability. So you have to write there is IT band, uh, it runs from this to this, and what is its role? It provides lateral stability and some other additional points which we have discussed already. And if possible, mention about the bursa because bursa do not have a greater role in stability except that it helps in reducing the friction. It's fine, you can skip on that. Then you have to write out the muscles. Very important. Anterior group, posterior group, lateral group and medial group muscles. How they are going to provide stability. Remember, don't just write the anatomy of the muscle, you don't get marks. How to write how this muscle is going to provide stability. For that in your Sindhya knocking, there is a uh, what do you call a table which is in 11.1. I think in the new textbook it is in 387 page. There is a summary of knee joint stabilizers. Okay, so here it is beautifully written how each muscle, how each passive structure like uh, anterior crucial ligament, posterior crucial ligament runs or contribute to the stability of the knee joint. So you have to mention about that. I hope that's clear. I know it's a vast discussion, but still, you have to prepare for the best in this one. Okay, and then you go to mobility, you write about the, all the motions that are possible in the tibia and the femur or tibia femoral joint. You write about a very small one about the coupled motion and you finish out by contributing uh, which muscles provide that motion, which muscles provide knee extension, which muscles provide any flexion, etc. Remember, it's a stability and mobility component, equal weightage. So, 7.5 marks would be for stability, 7.5 mark for would be for mobility or 
10 and 5. So you have to write about the mobility also. Clear? I hope that's clear with that very important question in the knee joint. And second one is also confusing. What can I do in that? Structure and function of the knee joint and effects of aging and disease. Here you are actually saved because they are asking about the structure and function. So you can write down the same thing that we said. How tibiofemoral joint is contributed or designed, what are the articulation? There you can write more about the bone because they are asking about the structure and function. Then you have to write on the men's scan, ligaments, etc. Very briefly, very briefly, and move on to function very briefly. Remember, always in essay question, read it twice and underline the important things because here they are asking structure, function and effects of aging and disease. You write about the structure and aging and disease but you forget about the function. You don't get mark of that. So you have to write down each and every one. And finally effects of aging and disease in the knee joint. We haven't discussed that video in the channel because uh, that's not uh, something uh, uh, what you call that can be discussed in a lecture because you know most of the things that can happen in the knee joint and this includes the clinical conditions also. So you have to write about the meniscal injuries, what are the possibilities of meniscal injuries, which meniscus is more injured, what are the possibilities of osteoarthritis which is very common in the knee joint. Uh, you can write down the inflammation of the bursa the housemate's bursa inflammation, you can write down about that, okay? Then you can write about the patella plica syndrome. You can say that the plica inflammation can say result in plica syndrome. So what is plica you can write down? You can write down on the tendonitis, okay? Different tendons are seen. A lot of tendons are seen around the knee joint. So they can get inflammated and result in tendonitis. So you start with structure, you go with function, then you go for the uh, what you call stability and mobility component, sorry the aging and disease, sorry aging and disease, there you have to write about the meniscal injury, osteoarthritis, bursa, patella plica and tendonitis. Explain it in a very brief manner so you get good marks. If it is stability and the structure and function and aging and disease on the knee joint instead, they are asking knee complex, you have to go with the patellofemoral joint injuries, patellofemoral pain syndrome, lateral dislocation, lateral subluxation of the patella, etc. Mostly they will ask it for the only knee joint. So if it is a knee joint, you don't know how to write about the patellofemoral syndrome or patellar plica or patellar dislocation, etc. I hope that's clear. So very important two questions that can be asked from the essay. And if you don't prepare and if you just see this question for the first time, I think that you can miss some marks, right? So prepare this one. I would suggest you write down these questions. Take your notebook, take our lectures, um, take your textbook, write one time this essay. Then you will prepare well for the examination. The short note questions or short essays are very easy in this chapter because they are direct questions. First one would be genu valgum and varum. You know that genu valgum and varum can be asked. You can just write on that. Menisci can be asked. You have to study about that. The joint capsule is not uh, usually asked. I mean, joint capsule may be asked as a uh, three marks question, not in the short essay. Uh, ligaments, very important. Compare and contrast between ACL and PCL. Uh, differentiate between MCL and LCL. So easy method to study the ligaments of the knee joint is that draw two columns, compare them and study them. It will be very easy. I promise you it will be very easy. Motions of patella. You have to remember motions of patella. And finally, a question like a structure of the knee joint. Exactly the, the one which we saw in the essay question. The structure of the knee joint, they can ask you. Okay, then you have to write about the structure. No need to write about the function because they just asked about the structure. So these are the short essay question which can be asked from 8 to 10 or 6 to 10 marks. Okay, so what would be that? Genu valgum and varum, menisci, uh, joint capsule, ligaments of the knee complex, all the ligaments, very important, motions of the patella and structure of the knee joint. Clear? And the last one is the short note question where you have very important Easy to write short down. One is the locking and unlocking of the knee. You can accept this to be asked as a short essay also. Okay, locking and unlocking of the knee. IT band, bursa around the knee joint, the quadriceps muscle, opposite muscle group, hamstring muscle, then the quadriceps lag. That's I don't think that they can ask you in that, but they might ask you this for a while. What is quadriceps lag? 
the last five degree or ter extension of the knee is being what you call compromised due to the lag that can happen in the cortisol process. We have discussed that. If not, it's there in the textbook. You have to write down for a short note. And plica syndrome, very important. Okay, plica syndrome we have discussed. We have one video on that. You can study from that and extensor mechanism of the knee. So I told you earlier, extensor mechanism may be asked as a three marks question or you can write down it in the uh, essay also. So that's also important. Once again, I'll tell you the short note questions, which I feel that is most important. It's IT band, it's a bursa, it's a Q angle. Oh, yes, Q angle, I forgot to mention. Q angle is important, okay? I, I think that it's very easy to Q angle. Q angle, then locking and unlocking of the knee, quadriceps muscle, hamstring muscle, quadriceps lag, plica syndrome, and extrinsic mechanism. So these are very important things. Once again, I tell you that uh, I suggest you these are the important things, but this may not be the ones that can be asked completely. So you cannot tell in that manner. Up to 1995% this questions only will be asked. So you can prepare these questions well. I always suggest you once again write these questions in a notebook. Don't miss out this one. And the essay question in this chapter is a bit confusing one, not like dynamic and static stabilization. So yeah, I suggest you after this video, just take your notebook, yeah, if you're free uh, today night, just write down and look the essay. If anybody needs correction, you can just mail on to my mail ID and directly I'll correct it and you. Okay, all the best for your examinations and we'll come up with yet another video on I think most probably on hip complex, how to write the hip complex biomechanics examination. Until then stay tuned and if you like the video don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to my channel.